Now for our story. It was quite late. Del Shipley's apartment was cool and restful in the soft glow of the lamplight. A pleasant breeze came through the open window near which Del sat with her old friend, Mary Lane. Aunt Mary had arrived a few minutes earlier after a hurried departure from Wakefield. She had come to talk to Lisa Fenner, whose baby son was the center of a custody suit between Kit Calvert and Bill Mead, who believed the child to be his own. Aunt Mary hoped to persuade Lisa to claim her son. Now she leans forward anxiously. You don't think that Lisa's already gone to New York? Oh, yes, Mary, I do. I'm very much afraid Lisa and Lance have checked out. I've been trying to reach them all evening over Lily's apartment, but they didn't answer. Well, that's why I'm so worried. It may be too late. Well, let's try the caller again. Okay, Mary, it won't hurt to try. Oh, I do hope she's there. No answer. But there must be someone. Oh, I don't know. If they've already taken the train, oh, I suppose they could place them somehow, but finding someone in New York, well, it would take time, but there isn't time. Tomorrow is the last day of Bill's trial, and we're just plain bad luck, I'm afraid, Mary. Oh, I wish I knew what to suggest, but frankly, I'm stumped. If only I had come to Chicago sooner. Oh, but you couldn't foresee what was going to happen, and if Lily hadn't started you thinking from what you said. I know, I know. And yet I've had this feeling all along about Lisa. But the idea that the baby might be hers. Well, it, it was such a fantastic idea. I know. Naturally, it wouldn't occur to you unless you had some kind of a lead. I was wondering, you could probably present the evidence in court. Yes, I could, but I wouldn't feel right about it doing it that way. It should come from Lisa herself. It's such a serious charge to make. If Lisa were there to tell her story in her own way, that would be different. Yeah. Besides, Kit Calvert would always deny the whole thing. I mean, unless Lisa was there to prove the child is hers. Yes, that's so. There's no question but what she would, from what I've heard of her. I doubt that she'd give an inch unless she were absolutely cornered. After all the trouble she went to getting hold of Lisa's baby, she's not going to give up without a struggle. And I think of that courtroom tomorrow. Bill's so worried about the baby. Yeah, uh, so many people mixed up in the thing. Lance, the baby's own father, not knowing he has a son. That makes it all worse. So Lisa did go back to Lance, finally. I hoped she would all along. But I had no idea. Yeah, she, she was afraid to at first, and I couldn't figure out why, the way she talked. You could tell she was in love with the guy, and until I knew about the baby, and I naturally didn't understand what was holding her back. But it's strange, Bill, for Lisa to deceive him. Not tell him that he is a father. It doesn't sound like her somehow. Lisa is basically an honorable person. Oh, yes, but you see, Mary, she does love him a great deal. And she's gone through such a lot of heartache and looks up the trip, bringing herself to give the baby up and all that. And from what I gather, she's decided she has a right to happiness with Lance. And she's sure if she told him the truth, he'd leave her. Oh, it is a dreadful situation for her. But if she only realized how foolish it is, Trying to build a new life with her husband on lies. It could only lead to unhappiness for both of them. Oh, I tried to make her see it that way, Mary. But I didn't even get the first day. Maybe you could if you had a chance to talk to her. Oh, but the way it looks now, your hands are tied, too. Yes, it does. And yet, uh, somehow I just can't believe it was meant to turn out this way. But so many young people were intended to be unhappy. Something's got to happen, though. You no. Know? I hate to discourage you, Mary, but I don't see what could happen now, short of a miracle. If Grace is on her way to New York, why... Well, well, I don't suppose there's anything we can do. And yet, somehow, I just can't give up now. I just can't. Then think of something. And at that moment, the young woman upon whom Aunt Mary's thoughts are concentrated was sitting beside her husband as he drove his rented car slowly through the streets. They had left Lily's apartment with their luggage several hours before train time, for Lisa was restless, anxious to be on their way. Now, Lance says, Sure you haven't changed your mind, darling? Changed? About what, Lance? About leaving Chicago. Got a nice little set up here. In a way, we might do better stay for a while. Oh, so, no. I... I don't want to stay, Lance. Really? Okay, well, sweetheart. I just wanted to remind you there's still time. You could cancel our reservation. No. You don't understand. I want to get out of Chicago. I'm not sure I ever want to come back. No, I don't get it. 
You never used to like being uprooted, tracing all over the country. Remember how you used to say you'd like to have a nice little apartment? Live like human beings. Yes, I know. I still feel that way. But we can settle down in New York. Mm, we may not have it easy out at first, you know. Everything's crowded. Well, we'll be lucky if we don't wind up sleeping on a park bench. I don't mind. Just so long as we're away from here. Okay, then. I guess we'd better get this jalopy back to the garage. There's plenty of time. I have a bite to eat and still have a half an hour to get to the station. And so you come to think of it, I'm starved. Tell him there's a package of cigarettes in the glove compartment. Hand me one, will you please? Mm-hmm. Maybe it'll help me forget how hungry I am. Here you are. Oh, okay, now the matches. Oh, darn it, I haven't a one. See if you can find some. I think I have some in my bag. I used to carry them for Lily. She never seemed to have any. Oh, dear. How can I be so Smash. Lily, please, here they are in my bag. I meant to leave them with the marriage with the apartment. Oh, what's the difference? We can put them in an envelope and mail them from the station. I don't like to do that, man. Too much of loss. Seems as if the least I can do is be sure Lily has her key so she comes up to the city for a weekend. Oh, okay. It does seem a nuisance of driving all the way back. Say, why don't we take them around and leave them at the Golden Peacock? Yes. We could do that, but... But what? Well, I, I don't particularly want to see Dell. In fact, I'd much rather not. But you won't have to see her, my little warrior. The peacock's closed on Mondays, isn't it? Oh, that's right. So it is. <laughs> you can just give him to the janitor. Maybe he'll be puttering around somewhere. Tell him to hand him over to Mrs. Shipley in the morning. Okay? That's a good idea, Lan. I would feel a lot better. Being sure Lily won't be inconvenient. I know. It'll just take us about five minutes to get there. I'll go around to the back entrance. Tony's probably working in the storeroom. Jelly's a new to be so nervous about seeing Belle. Somehow I just hate to face her. I know she doesn't approve of what I'm doing. I couldn't make her understand. But she couldn't stop me from leaving. And it isn't as if I hadn't thought the whole thing over again and again. I'm doing what I want to do. Lance and I will be happy. Baby, Wakefield, Chip. I'll forget all about it. I hope this door isn't locked. Oh, thank goodness. Tony! Tony! I don't hear him. Maybe he's... would like to talk to you. But... Oh. Aunt Mary. Hello, Lisa. The young dancer entered the room hesitantly, white-faced. But Aunt Mary's heart filled with thankfulness. Perhaps, after all, her mission, the reason she'd come to Chicago, was not to be a failure. But I wonder, Aunt Mary, if you can persuade Lisa Fenner to give up her own chance for happiness for a new life with her husband, Lance, who was outside waiting for her at this minute. 